if it's uh, in mixed case, and hope in PGP if it's all lowercase. So um, I was told I needed to uh, have something about me, so uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm the guy giving the talk. <laughs> And apparently I started this back in uh, March 2012 uh, because I wanted to uh, use OpenPGP with TLS and it seemed like it would be easiest uh, to uh, do both client and server in Haskell and uh, boy was I wrong. <laughs> But uh, Haskell is great, and there, I, I was not aware of uh, any options uh, other than one set of uh, <coughs> bindings to GPGME. And GPGME was uh, suboptimal for uh, various reasons. Um, and even though there's, there's now... Um, a better set of bindings for uh, GPGME. Um, it's it's still got the limitations of GPGME itself, and uh, I think it's still useful to have uh, a separate implementation. Um, so, uh, in 2011, uh, two different people independently uh, started writing OpenPGP uh, implementations. Uh, one of whom. I, actually wanted to do the same stuff with RC6091 uh, and uh, that's that's how we uh, found out about our uh, competing projects uh, and we've made a slight effort to uh, merge our code bases but it's proven to be difficult for various reasons and um, Basically, we now uh, just share a test suite, and it, it, it's possible that will be uh, improved in future. So, um, it's really difficult to uh, have a program make use of uh, OpenPGP because you either have to shell out to GNU PG itself. Uh, or you use GPGME, which is a library that shells out to GNU PG with uh, a different API. Um, and I think that's why there's uh, like 15 different uh, Python libraries for, for <laughs> OpenPGP, and only two of them use GPGME, and the rest uh, call GPG directly. Um, so one of the uh, problems or one of the frequent complaints about GNU PG is that it's uh, difficult to use so a library that's not difficult to use would uh, theoretically be useful for making easier to use interfaces uh, and uh, of course uh, I, I enjoy threads on Debian project about uh, key size and hash algorithms and Having a library to uh, facilitate that is uh, is pretty great. So there are three uh, components in the suite. Um, H Open PGP and Open PGP ASCII Armor are uh, the libraries, and Open PGP tools are the tools. Uh, they're available from Hackage, Sackage, and Debian and nowhere else that I'm aware of. OpenPGP ASCII Armor is pretty boring. It's the ASCII Armor codec. Uh, it's been unchanged since sometime in 2012, I think. Uh, and it is, I think, the only Haskell implementation. Um, everybody else just uh, uses it. And even though it uh, could be improved, nobody uh, has pushed for it to be changed, so uh, maybe that will happen in future. HOpenPGP is more interesting. Uh, it does the rest of RFC 4880, uh, compression signatures. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a beast. Um, it's not uh, entirely portable because it uses uh, Haskell uh, features that are not present on all of Debian's architectures, 
And uh, the API keeps changing and is going to keep changing for the foreseeable future. Uh, so yesterday, Zach asked me if I was going into the internals. And uh, I said I wasn't because I uh, hadn't thought of a good way to do that. But uh, since this is the functional programming track and uh, it's uh, about Haskell, um, I'm now going to show you uh, how some of this works. So um, this is a uh, data type called TK. TK stands for transferable key. It represents a uh, transferable public or secret key as defined by RFC 4880. And the uh, it mostly mirrors the uh, binary structure of uh, such a series of packets, uh, which is the uh, public or secret key represented by the pair on top. Uh, any number of uh, replication signatures, uh, any number of uh, UIDs and their corresponding certifications, uh, any number of uh, user attribute uh, sets and their corresponding uh, certifications, and any subkeys. So, uh, Probably some of these should be uh, non-empty lists instead of lists. The, the, the brackets represent lists of whatever types inside. And the parentheses and commas represent uh, tuples, uh, which in this case are all pairs. Um, so we, we could, with the type system, actually uh, say that some of these are not allowed to be empty. They need at least one element. Uh, so um, at some point in the future, uh, I'll probably do that for correctness sake. Uh, and the last line of the, uh, the data declaration, which is in record syntax, um, is for automatically deriving um, instances of type classes. So um, the ek and show type classes uh, allow you to compare for equality and um, convert to string, respectively. And GHC will uh, derive those automatically if it knows how. Uh, and in this case, it does because uh, each of the uh, types contained within this structure uh, also have uh, the corresponding uh, instances. Uh, but for ORD, which is a class that allows you to um, see whether something is less than, greater than, or equal, um, we're defining this by hand. And so we're saying that a transferable key gets ordered uh, solely on the basis of the contents of the public or secret key. Uh, so that may not be the best idea, but that's uh, what's happening now. Um, did any of the non-Haskellers understand any of that? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, so uh, we're also defining an instance for indexable, which is um, how I've chosen to represent uh, key rings for now. Uh, so we make an indexable set, set of all the uh, keys you insert, and then we uh, have an index for uh, the UIDs, the 20 octet fingerprints, the 8 octet key IDs, and the entire public key payload itself, which is probably uh, the cause of uh, DKG's laptop heating up and, and spinning for 90 minutes at, at a time. Uh, but uh, 
we can work on that later. Uh, and then this is uh, the semigroup instance. This is a semigroup is a set with an associative binary operator. Uh, for a long time, I wanted to make a monoid, but uh, I couldn't figure out how to do the identity element. Um, so uh, I made a semigroup instead. Uh, so this. Uh, says how to uh, basically merge two keys. Um, so if you have key A and key B, uh, we're going to take the uh, public or secret key from key A and we're just going to throw away the, that part from key B. And then for the revocations, UIDs, uh, UATs, and uh, subkeys, we're just going to merge them together uh, with the functions uh, at the bottom in the where clause there. Um, and uh, so... It's just the NSA. Yeah, why is the NSA in there? Why is the NSA in there? It's an... <laughs> 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 Every customer has to see if they're paying attention. Right, so... Um, that, that's just an abbreviation for no sort append, but uh, we, we need more conspiracy theories, it's true. Um, so the, this, this is going to be theoretically useful for uh, if somebody wants to build a tool to fetch uh, keys from a key server and then just uh, merge the new signatures onto an existing key or something like that. Um, and so the, the very first thing I had to do after uh, defining a bunch of types uh, was uh, serialization. So um, actually the serialization was less important than uh, the parsing part, which uh, is the next slide. But um, so this uh, expresses how to write out a public key payload, which is most of the public key, uh, to a byte string. And so on, on top we have uh, a V3 key. So it outputs uh, the octet 3 to um, show that it's a V3 key, and then it uh, has a big endian uh, creation time and uh, the V3 expiration and the public key algorithm and the uh, public key itself. And the reason um, we do put PKA instead of a uh, more specialized uh, function is that there is a put instance for public key algorithms already. And so we can just use that. And on the bottom, um, it's a V4 key. And we're just uh, throwing away the uh, V3 expiration field because it's not relevant. Um, so that helps produce a, a byte string from a, uh, a key. And this uh, is the other direction. This will parse a public key payload. Um, so this is, this is using the serial library. Um, and if the, if the binary library continues to uh, improve, uh, it might be good to switch to that instead. So this, yes? I'm, I'm curious about why you have the public key algorithm separate from the public key object, given that it seems like the public key object could know its own um, algorithm, or would that? So the way the, the, the types are, um, so, somewhat of a rat's nest. Uh, the you, you're as 
What are you asking Disclaimer, exactly? I'm not, I'm not a Haskell programmer. OK, how about we come back to that uh, okay. at the end or something? Um, so this, this is the uh, inverse operation. We're grabbing an octet uh, to find out the version. Um, then we're grabbing the creation time. And then depending on the value of the version, uh, we either read a v3 or a v4 key. Uh, I had to. Uh, change it to accept uh, a version of 2 because there's all kinds of weird things on the key servers and I was trying to parse as much of it as possible and there are a lot of uh, keys with that value and they seem to be exactly like v3 keys but I'm not sure uh, so <laughs> that might be something to figure out later um, and at the end it, it's gonna uh, come back with uh, either a v3 or a v4 key or, or fail entirely because it's a new uh, or invalid key format. So uh, now we uh, segue into the uh, command line tools themselves, which uh, some of you have been using and uh, uh, maybe of more general interest. Um, so HKT is the uh, H open PGP keyring tool, and right now you can uh, export keys, list them, um, and then you can also graph certifications and find paths between keys. This is uh, something Dav asked me about uh, at Hope, and uh, uh, it was easier than I thought to implement. Um, so an example of uh, HKT is um, we can take the uh, Debian key ring and list all keys with a creation time uh, I, greater than January 1st of this year. So you can see uh, all the keys in the Debian key ring that were created this year. Um, so there's two different ways to specify keys uh, with this tool. Uh, well, there, the, you can either do uh, a long key ID, uh, full fingerprint, a user ID substring, or a filter expression, which is this uh, basically a DSL I wrote that needs to be totally uh, overhauled, but uh, lets you do things like a uh, numeric comparer on the timestamp. Uh, so uh, probably the the most popular tool right now is Hokey, uh, which has one subcommand, uh, which is lint, and that uh, aims to let you know how you're doing uh, uh, with regard to the OpenPGP best practices document uh, published by RiseUp. Um, so uh, you can e either use HKT to export a key uh, and uh, pipe it to Hokey, or you can use GPG. It, it takes a transferable key in uh, RFC 4880 format uh, in in OpenPGP packets, so any compliant tool that exports a key in that format can be used uh, as a source, and um, you can get output uh, with with pretty colors, or you can get it in JSON or YAML if you change the uh, output format. Uh, and so, uh, if you read any of the uh, messages on Debian Project, where I posted uh, some statistics that came from uh, the JSON output and post-processing with uh, JQ. <coughs> so this example will uh, <coughs> export all RSA keys greater than 8K from the Debian key ring, which I think is just one or two, one, uh, and uh, complain about how his expiration date is too far in the future. Uh, so now there's hot, which uh, is meant to operate on um, 
either ASCII armor or uh, individual open PGP packets. So uh, there's a filtering here that uh, operates without context. So um, and and the syntax is also uh, uh, suboptimal for historical reasons that should be fixed. Um, so. Uh, if we do the same export again to get uh, the uh, the person with the big key, and we pipe it to hot filter, um, we have to specify filters for pub keys, uh, signatures, and other packets, which is really not ideal. But if you don't do that, it's going to just uh, let them all through um, and. In this example, I want only signature packets that are positive certifications, and I want to uh, dump them to the screen. So um, this this also probably needs an overhaul, so you can uh, specify that filter without three different command line switches. Um, so uh, I talked briefly about uh, the graphing done by uh, HKT. Um, so this is the uh, KSP key ring uh, uh, built by Anibal uh, prior to the conference. And um, you can't really see what's going on here. But uh, so the, the graph command uh, outputs uh, a file in, or not a file, it outputs dot or, I don't, I don't really know the difference between dot and graph is uh, formats, so uh, perhaps they're the same, but. Uh, dot is one of the formats of graph is. Okay, all right, so uh, it outputs something that can be rendered by dot and um, then you can convert it into an image and so. <laughs> How many CPUs did you melt for that? Um, not many. This this, <laughs> this didn't not take. Many, uh, you did <laughs> this this is a small keyring. If you try to do this on the Debian keyring or or your personal keyring, you're going to be uh, in a lot of pain. But uh, we might be able to optimize that. Um, so uh, the other thing is that. Uh, this is purely a self-contained operation. Um, it's verifying signatures on this keyring from this keyring. So anybody not in the, key, the KSP list is not going to be used as a connector. So uh, this this is all pretty uh, self-connected. Uh, and then this stuff up here. Well, actually, I. Uh, so I had to um, zoom in here so you could see. Uh, so this is this is each uh, arrow represents a certification that's uh, verified and valid according to uh, the the logic uh, we're currently using, uh, which may be flawed and. Um, so number 23 up there is Anibal's, uh, I forget which key, but one of him. And uh, I, I guess that should be pretty self-explanatory. And then, yes. Hold on. Yes. Uh, is that image up anywhere on the internet? Not yet. OK. Can it be? The, the specific image? Uh, not this one, the full image. Um, but they can't yeah, be. I mean, you could you could generate it yourself and I publish it. I <laughs> Clint, what what um, versions of Open PGP tools are your examples drawn from? Will they work in the versions that are in Jesse? So, unfortunately, um, Jesse. I don't like that way to answer. To start yes. That. So, so these these are uh, from the Jesse version. Uh, I'm using an unreleased version for pathfinding a little bit later because I uh, am apparently a hypocrite and can't uh, release early and release often. So, 
Uh, so that's that's nice, healthy uh, connections. And then the upper right is uh, people who are in uh, either solo or pairs. Uh, and you can see that uh, the pairs on the right side are, are bi-directionally uh, certified, and on the left, uh, they're just one way. So uh, you can also find paths uh, in this keyring. Um, and it uses a Dijkstra uh, pathfinding algorithm to uh, determine the shortest paths. And so the there were four uh, paths that were seven hops, and they all start with uh, key 118, which in this case is uh, uh, one of uh, Ishwen's uh, keys. And you can see the path from him to uh, the four people on the right. Um, so and uh, for some reason, uh, LaTeX lets me do uh, Unicode characters for for some things and not for others. So this has been uh, sanitized a little. Question: So could you do you use this to figure out which the most advantageous mutual key signings would be? Yes. Uh, so Sorry, uh, Dav asked that if you could use this to uh, see what uh, the most advantageous uh, key signings would be, and uh, I think so. so. And I've actually been uh, specifically specifically targeting people here uh, if they are uh, at maximum hops for me. Uh, so um, you can also uh, use it to uh, find your path to someone else for the, the usual reasons, I guess. Um, so uh, you can also use the same output to see uh, the, the nexuses of uh, <laughs> paths. And so this is as of this morning, uh, which all of these numbers have gone up since the beginning of the conference, and actually, uh, Team Marble and Tumbleweed had switched places just this morning. <laughs> um, so it's a race. Um, what do those numbers mean? Yeah. So the number on the left is the it, it's a, an ID number. It's the same as in the previous slides. Um, it's just. A, arbitrary ID after uh, whatever ordering uh, was done to make the graph, and uh, it, it's static within this hearing. Um, and then the right side is how many of the paths from everybody, or from each person to each other person, uh, contained uh, that key as a middle hop. So. Um, so that there are 592 paths from e someone to someone else that go through Paul Tag. Mm -hmm. Shortest paths or just paths in general? Shortest paths. Okay. Um, How does it deal with um, two <coughs> equally equal length paths? Do those count twice? It, please repeat. It, uh, Daniel asked how it deals with uh, two equally uh, long paths, and I believe it should give you both, but uh, I am not sure. Um. So these should look a little more familiar uh, if you read Debian Project. Um, so there were 123 keys in the KSP key ring. One of them is DSA. Uh, two of them are 8K. One of them is 16K. Um, two of them have uh, what Rise Up considers a weak hash with a higher preference on the uh, hash preferences uh, sub packet. 
and uh, there's there's still uh, controversy about expiration times, but uh, according to the guidelines, this is uh, ha how they uh, stack up. And uh, this is about uh, user IDs and user attributes. And um, someone is using RipeMD160 for self-sigs, and uh, most people are not. <laughs> and um, so this is more than there are keys. Is that because it's per self sig on each this sub key as well as user right, ID? Yes, this is each each valid uh, certification <coughs> for each uh, UID or UAT. So if you have but not not for sub keys. Yes, not for sub keys. Okay. Um, so there's that. And so with the uh, with the tools, you can also um, do what if scenarios. So um, the top is the strong connectivity of the KSP key ring um, on August twenty first, um, and so there's eighty seven. Uh, people in a strong set and two pairs, um, which I think are probably just uh, one person each with two keys that are cross signed, but might not be. Um, and if you filter out all uh, ripe MD160 and SHA1 signatures, that strong set drops down to 69 keys. Um, so you can see how. Uh, the web of trust might be um, strengthened or weakened by uh, various operations. Uh, and so uh, over the conference, I think um, each of those top numbers has gone up by about eight, and the one of one of the uh, two clusters has disappeared entirely so. Uh, we're we're gaining strong co connectivity uh, throughout the the conference. Um, so, all right. Um, so there's there's someone working on uh, using the H Open PGP and Open PGP Askery Armor. Uh, libraries in the Hackage server and Cabal. Uh, I don't know how uh, that'll turn out, but uh, there's there's a branch you can look at if you're interested. Um, um, I would like to see more. Yes, Eric. Um, what's Hackage? Oh, uh, so Hackage is um, a software distribution uh, system for Haskell. It's like uh, CPAN or the Cheese Shop or, or whatever Ruby has. Uh, and then <laughs> Cabal is the tool equivalent to PIP or GEM or um, CPAN or, or what have you to fetch and uh, build and install Thanks. software. Um, so I'd like to, to see further work um, trying to um, reduce duplicated effort with the uh, Open PGP library. Um, Daniel uh, has asked for uh, some sort of uh, key canonicalizer so keys can be diffed uh, more easily. Uh, the API needs improvements. Uh, we have the potential for other language bindings because uh, Haskell has a bi-directional foreign function in interface, so we can come up with a C API for the uh, Haskell library and then any other language with a, a C API, uh, FFI can uh, theoretically um, bind to HOpenPGP 
through that. Um, the hard part, I believe, will be coming up with APIs that make sense. Uh, so if anybody has any ideas about that, that would be great. Um, people want to make GUIs, um, I'd be happy about that. Uh, Key ring operations are a pain, so if uh, somebody can come up with a better way to store keys on disk so that they're easily, no? Okay. Yes? Uh, so we were playing around with the PG, uh, PG, uh, GPG 2.1 this week, and it's got a new uh, disk format called Keybox. Which I'm guessing this is your tool doesn't support yet. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I looked at Keybox a little, and um, I forget. Uh, well, I forget the details, but it seemed like it wouldn't help. But maybe I misunderstood it. Um, the well, so so. Uh, <coughs> Oh, for performance, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the difficulty is the, the performance problem I'm alluding to is with uh, um, indexing a whole bunch of keys and then uh, retrieving them from wherever they're indexed. Um, so another idea. Uh, Daniel had was a uh, validating key server uh, that would only accept uh, valid keys and signatures uh, through cryptographic uh, verification. So just, just Except SKS, which will then screw it up. Right, right. So yes, there are, there are problems if you want to gossip with the SKS protocol. Um, but for background, none of the public key servers do any cryptographic verification of keys at all. At the no, moment. they don't. I actually run one of the SKS key servers on the network. Yep, and none of them do cryptographic verification. So the idea here is that maybe we could think about setting up key servers that did that, and then they would not actually probably gossip with SKS because they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be able to accept some of the things that are on the SKS key servers. Right. So as so. So I do very limited hash verification in my key server, not the full validating the signature, but making sure that the there's a two bytes which basically say the hash function that then you can use to say, yes, this hash is actually valid and throw away uh, a signature that is obviously not the right one. And particularly that's useful for the subkey damage that PKS used to do. So it's so why I have got there, but my main issue with doing validating key servers is how do you then form a key server network where the, the keys are different on different key servers. And, and that's already causing me problems as someone running a non-SKS key server. If you talk loudly, the room mics should pick it up, so you don't necessarily need mm. a password. Um, I noticed you didn't talk about implementing a GPG-compatible interface on the previous slide. Are you interested in doing that? Is that something that might happen? I say this particularly because uh, you for, uh, hypothetically, it would be good if something like the GPG extensions for Thunderbird would use Hope and PGP instead. So my focus thus far has been to try to do things that uh, GPG can't do or doesn't do well. Um, I have no objection to people trying to write a GPG clone, uh, but uh, for now it's it's more interesting for me to, to have a tool that can do something I can't do. Uh, Joey? Yeah, have you looked into how well it ha you handle encryption and decryption, right? Uh, to some extent, yeah. Yeah, I mean, have you looked at, are there incompatibilities? I don't know how good a standard open PGP is as standards go. Um, so so far, so the there's a there's a test suite which need needs more tests, but uh, uh, much of the data in the test suite has been produced by uh, GNU PG, um, and then there's stuff uh, um, 
pulled off the key servers. So uh, I'm there, there's there's a lot of uh, sanity checking against uh, real world uh, data. Uh, I, I forgot the original question. So. <laughs> well, I was I was wondering. Um, you're clearly, you're clearly using it a lot for key management and analysis, but what about actually using it to encrypt and decrypt data? Um, and the old GPU, other than that. yeah, other other than um, like test cases, I haven't uh, really done that. Um, so uh, there there was a. A little while I was working on secret key decryption because I wanted to uh, use a stronger cipher for my secret key and I thought I couldn't redo a cipher with GPG but then it turned out I could so um, so the decryption support is there but not the uh, re-encryption um, and uh, for Mostly for fear reasons, I haven't really been doing anything that's not read-only. So, um, the, if if you want to uh, modify uh, files, you have to redirect to to another file and do it yourself. Um, anyway. So, um, yeah, if if anyone would like to uh, help contribute, there's. Uh, some ideas, and um, I guess we can we can continue with questions now. Or um, if anyone wants me to to demo something, maybe I could try that. Or Micah, yes, sir. Can you uh, show how you generated that set of keys that would make it? would be ideal to track down and sign here? Yep, if I can figure out XRander. Um, so So, uh, 
hold it. You can I'm not going to do it again. You want to be um, can, you, can you do it with your key as a start point? Yeah. So. Uh, or it's slower, still slow. It's, yeah, it's okay. going to be quicker for me to uh, just use oh, right. Um, okay. right now. So, which one of those do you put your own? The second one. <laughs> but there, there's there's a problem with the syntax right now that won't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, Does the any 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 work with what's out there in Jesse now, or is that you know, no? No, this is you can see the the first word uh, is I'm using a locally built copy. Okay. Um, but uh, if you all nag me, I will upload the. Consider show nag. Yeah, yeah, please do it. Not, not right now. Can you use Open PGP to sign your change of style and just upload it right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. <laughs> So actually, uh, so okay, so I'll, I should show you the, the output first, so this makes sense. <coughs> okay, so and the left is kind of off. Um, gee. Wow. Wow, that's that's engineering. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, so each line is uh, a tuple of so the the first number before the comma is the length of the path. Uh, this is just so I could uh, sort, uh, and then after the comma is a list of um, the shortest path as, as determined. So, um, so the first line is one to one, which is <coughs> zero hops because uh, it's self-signed. And then the second one is from one to two, which is uh, achieved by traversing uh, key number five. And then so on and so forth. And then at the, the bottom of the file, uh, there's a mapping of the key number to the fingerprint, so you have some idea who those people might be. Um, and obviously, this could be uh, made uh, a lot more user friendly if uh, you wanted. Um, so if you grep, so I'm, I'm number six. Um, so if you grep for any path that starts with six or ends with six, uh, you're going to get. Thank you. So. Uh, so now I have all the paths from me or to me uh, ordered by hops. So. Uh, at the bottom, uh, you can see that uh, Guo Yixuan and I are uh, fur furthest from each other, um, and then some other people are, are slightly closer. And so, if you if you want to find who's farthest from you, that's how you do it. But currently, there's no way for me to do it before everybody leaves because this is not yet committed. Um, it's committed. You can build it yourself. You That's can. Really you the the current version will give you those numbers. Uh, it won't give you the length, and it won't give you the fingerprint. So, um, yes and no. If you can figure out who those people are, you can do it. Or actually, uh, the the change is in the Git repo, so you can you can build it yourself instead of waiting for. Me to upload the package. Anything else? The, the, the source code is is in Git, and the packaging is in Darks. That's that's true. Well, this is the, Just to it, keep us on our toes. Sad, sadly, Joachim uh, went home, uh, or you could troll him about that right now. <laughs> 
but yeah, everything we package in the uh, Debian Haskell group is the, has the Debian directory in Darks. Almost everything. Eric. Are there PHP bindings? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not yet that I'm aware of. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> thanks for working on this, Clint. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well then, thank you.